Well, hi everyone, and welcome to the College Admissions Collaborative highlighting Engineering and Technology College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event and have some really fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Karis and I will be serving as your facilitator. And so I have just a few housekeeping things um, as we get started. The first one is that you'll notice your camera and microphone are both off. So the panelists, they can't see or hear you. What you can do, however, is type a Q&A, use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen um, to type any questions you might have for our presenters um, during their presentation. This is just one of the many sessions happening tonight. And so they are all being recorded and will be available for you at strivescan.com slash cache. So that's all that I have for y'all. And I will turn it over to our presenters at Embry-Riddle. All right, welcome everybody. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our presentation. My name is Sarah Bofferding. I'm the Director of Admissions at the Prescott, Arizona campus of Embry-Riddle. We've got a great presentation here today and lots of good information to share. So I'll let my colleague Megan introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Sparrell. I'm the Director of Admissions at the Daytona Beach campus and thank you for joining us. So let's go ahead and get started and learn more about Embry-Riddle. Now in this presentation this evening, we're just gonna cover some um, topics that you'll see right here. We're gonna start with an overview of Embry-Riddle to make sure that you know some points of pride that are very important to us. Academics, we'll spend a good amount of time talking about the education that you'll get at Embry-Riddle, which will lead us right into the outcomes where an Embry-Riddle education can take you. We'll learn more about our two residential campuses as well as our online worldwide campus. And we'll wrap up talking about the next steps, including the admissions process, financial aid, and some additional topics there. So some things we want to know you to know about Embry-Riddle, points of pride, as I mentioned, the first being our number one aerospace engineering ranking. So we've had this ranking not just once or twice, not just two, three, even five times. We have had this ranking for 20 years. So what that means is we've really established ourselves in our degree programs, but also in aerospace engineering. We're known as being the best and the best in aviation and aerospace, and rankings such as this really help support that. Another thing about Embry-Riddle is we try to stay innovative with our degree programs offerings um, in different types of fields. So we have the first and only College of Business, Security and Intelligence in the nation. And this houses our global security and intelligence degree, our global conflict studies, our cybersecurity programs, as well as our master's degrees within these academic fields. Another unique program that we have at Embry-Riddle is our aerospace physiology program. So that's located at the Daytona Beach campus. It is actually our pre-med program. So this program is designed um, to allow you to learn more about uh, research and particularly studying the body in flight. So for instance, flight attendants, travelers, pilots, anybody who is going to be doing some air travel. And we are also number one for online bachelor's programs in the nation. So our worldwide campus was originally started for active military students, but now we have young working professionals that do take online classes as well. And then some additional facts we want to make sure you know about the first being our accreditation. So our engineering programs at Embry-Riddle, as well as our cybersecurity program, all have a BET accreditation with those programs. And just for your knowledge, especially in regards to the STEM fair tonight um, or info session, um, ABET is pretty much the overarching governing body that makes sure what you're learning in your curriculum um, actually prepares you to go out into the industry. So your standards are kind of automatically met just by coming through our program. Embry-Riddle graduates and our programs yield amongst the highest on the return on investment in the nation. So your return on investment is basically what you're getting out of your college tuition dollars. Um, and our graduates compared to over a thousand other institutions in the United States are making more over the courses of their career compared to others. We also have a very substantial alumni network. So 140,000 alumni um, in the Embry-Riddle network. And this is unique to us because the industries that we provide students to um, are very niche industries. So lots of doors we find can be open by knowing somebody who works in the company and who you know where you know them type thing. And we find that this network is a great opportunity for our students to tap into. 
And then very lastly, we've been top ranked in our states of Arizona and Florida for having the highest level of quality and affordability within the education that we do provide. So as mentioned, just some higher facts, some things we wanna make sure that you knew about Embry-Riddle. And let's jump right into our academic section. So in this section right here, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the recent projects and competitions that our students have been involved in. Now, with a slight disclaimer, you it is college here at Embry-Riddle, so you're still going to have your textbooks, you're still going to have your lectures and your papers to write, but you're also going to have some opportunities to get your hands dirty a little bit and get this real experience. So the first project I want to talk about has to do with Kepler's mission. Kepler's mission is basically something that NASA did. And what Kepler's mission did is it took a variety of pictures of the galaxy, basically. And there were over 800 binary star cluster pictures that were given to Embry-Riddle students. So what our students were doing is they were analyzing these star clusters to see if they could specifically find binary stars. If they do find a binary star, it's basically going to be one star that has two other stars circling it. So it could be very similar to a Star Wars planet, per se, where you have two rising suns, two setting moons up in the sky, if they do find a binary star cluster. I mentioned that College of, Secur of Business Security and Intelligence, and we've got a business club at our Arizona campus who competes every year in the Arizona State Business Competition, which means we go up against our big state schools at Arizona. And these are schools that have thousands and thousands of business students at their university. Um, meanwhile, here comes Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University with our small specialized aviation business program, global business program, and yet we have swept this competition for the past 13 years in a row. We have some of our undergraduate students get the opportunity to actually assist with neutrino detection at Los Alamos National Lab. So a neutrino is a really tiny little particle. It's so small, it's often referred to as a ghost particle. And there are three different types of neutrinos that have been discovered. And what our students are doing is they're trying to help discover the fourth classification that's thought to exist. And this fourth classification is thought to be a little bit larger, have a little bit more density, and with that density, it's thought to make up some of the dark matter of the universe. So undergraduate students actually doing um, hands-on real life research that could potentially impact the scientific community. We have some of our students um, in the Robotics Association, specifically at our Daytona Beach campus, who placed first place in design and second overall in the Intelligent Ground Vehicle Competition. So basically what they were doing is building and designing a vehicle, a car, that could go autonomously. So it didn't have to have somebody inside of it. So a pretty great opportunity. This is one of the first competitions they ever competed in. And here they were um, getting first place right out the gate and also second in the overall design. With this project right here, so we had some of our mechanical engineering students participate in NASA's Lunar Robotics Competition to design a moon mining robot. So this project was a couple of years ago, but it was a really great opportunity for our students. With this competition, they needed to build and design a robot that NASA could take up to the moon and it could excavate the moon dust. It could scoop through it. Um, our students created this robot. They named him Lair E, similar to Wall E, if you remember that Pixar movie. And they took Larry out to the competition. Now, unfortunately, we didn't win first place. We didn't scoop the most moon dust. But when NASA saw our robot, they on the spot gave us a brand new award that had never been given out before called the Judges Innovative Design Award because we were the one and only robot there that they could take up to the moon and it could serve its purpose. So if you happen to visit our Arizona campus of Embry-Riddle, you can still catch a glimpse of Larry. He's hanging out in our robotics lab. Now, a couple of years ago, we had one of our professors in our global security and intelligence degree come across a grant being offered by the Department of Justice. So what he did is he took some of our global security students out into the local K through 12 schools and they did safety and security assessments. So they did um, kind of analyzations of um, I just lost my train of thought. Analyzations 
of um, evacuation drills, or they looked at things, you know, in regards to an active shooter, if someone were to shut the door really quickly, could it close and could it lock and could everybody stay safe inside? They did a variety of different assessments through that and they made their recommendations and wrote it into the proposal. Well, fortunately enough, we were awarded that grant being offered from the Department of Justice in the amount of over $750,000. And what our students are continuing to do with those funds is they are going through out to more of the K through 12 schools in our area to help kind of improve their safety and security measures. We had, once again, you'll hear Megan and I say undergraduate a couple of times throughout the presentation this evening, but we had undergraduate students contribute to the LIGO's Nobel Prize winning gravitational wave detection. So the LIGO project um, is something that's been going on for many years, but in 2017, um, gravitational waves were actually detected from the LIGO facility, and that actually proved Einstein's theory of relativity, that gravitational waves existed. And this was so special to us at Embry-Riddle because we had three of our faculty members, but also two of our undergraduate students highly involved in this research. So technically, those young ladies who were doing the research could put on their resume that they helped prove Einstein's theory of relativity. And our very last project we want to talk about, um, we had just within the last year or so, some of our students construct a hot fire liquid rocket at our um, propulsion lab and rocket text complex on campus. So basically, this is a first for Embry-Riddle. We had students who really wanted to tackle this project. Um, they built this engine and they were able to have a successful fire and um, a test of it. So now all those students though on that project have graduated. And that's a really great opportunity for incoming students like yourselves because the next step is to fire the rocket for a 10 second burn. And then once that is done, we need something to put this rocket engine on. Um, so we need a vehicle of sort, a rocket, a, a, a type of aircraft um, for the future to continue to grow this project. Now, one other thing we wanna talk about in regards to projects and competitions is our flight team at Embry-Riddle. So obviously Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, we're big on airplanes. And um, we also don't have a football team at either one of our campuses, but this is the equivalent of our football team. So our flight team actually competes against other colleges in flight competition. They will fly our aircraft out to the competition site they might be tasked with doing a precision landing and trying to land on the runway so close to a marker. Um, they might do an aircraft navigation test, or they might simply do an aircraft identification exercise. Um, this is such a fun opportunity for our students and an amazing opportunity because Embry-Riddle has the winningest team in NIFA history and NIFA stands for the National Intercollegiate Flying Association. But as you can see right there, We've won 14 national championships. We are undefeated in the regional championships, consecutive 35 year um, consecutive rank there. And we've also been inducted into the San Diego Air and Space Museum Hall of Fame. So if you are a student looking to pursue our aeronautical science degree at Embry-Riddle, which is our professional flight program, I would highly recommend that you consider being a member or trying out for the flight team. If you do hold a flight spot on the team, any of your practice time and your competition time are paid flight hours by the university. So now let's talk just a little bit about taking that hands-on education outside of the classroom with study abroad opportunities. So what's really unique about study abroad is we have a few different types of study abroad. Um, so for instance, at our campuses, we have faculty-led study abroad. So before COVID, um, we did have our College of Business at the Daytona Beach campus take students to Greece. So they actually got to learn, take classes. Part of it was on a boat. And then they did go to land and they got to walk around and discover more about Greece. Um, these are discounted tuition prices. So typically you get about six credit hours. And it's a great way to learn um, different things about the faculty members on campus. And then you can also network with different students. It's not necessarily going to be all the same students in the same program. So you get to meet different students that are at uh, the campus that you choose. Continuing to take that hands-on learning outside of the classroom, internships and co-ops. 
So we don't require these for our degree programs at Ember-Riddle, but they're highly recommended because oftentimes once you get your foot in the door with these companies, you'll often see that there might be a job waiting for you upon graduation. Now, something that we do to really support our students with this is we have comprehensive career services on our campuses. And each student will have a career advisor who they can go to and they can inquire about these internships and co-ops. Come senior year, they um, can ask about job opportunities that might be available. They will even help you build a resume, help you tailor a resume. They'll help you practice interview uh, techniques. They're really there to help support our students for success. Um, we also host a variety of career expos on our campuses. This week is homecoming for us and Prescott and in Daytona Beach. Um, and something that we do around our homecoming weekends is we have a really large career expo because we want all the aviation companies Airlines, FBI, CIA, Boeing, Honeywell, Lockheed Martin. We want all those companies to send their Embry-Riddle alumni reps back to our campus for homecoming weekend, but also to go back, like I mentioned, um, to open that door and to provide opportunities for our students. At Career Expo, we also have lots of interviews that go on for these internships and co-ops. And again, it really just helps support our students. You're coming to Ember-Riddle to get your education and go out into the industry and career services really help supplement that. And now we'll wrap up um, our academic section by talking a little bit about faculty. So as Sarah mentioned, um, we do have faculty that come from a lot of different companies. Um, so we have partnerships with SpaceX, Lockheed Martin, NASA, um, but as you can see on the screen, this is just a small list of other employers that our faculty have come from. So as Sarah mentioned, it's very uh, much a good idea to get to know your faculty members because they can potentially land you your job. And what's also nice is because uh, we have a smaller campus sizes, which we'll talk about coming up here soon, is we have smaller class sizes that allow your professors to get to know who you are as a student. Sarah tells the story all the time, um, but we do have small class sizes. We'll talk about those too. But uh, if you miss class, your professor knows if they see you out on the sidewalk and say like, hey, Sarah, why didn't you come to class? So they absolutely know that you're missing. So it kind of keeps you focused. And of course, all of our students are pretty focused at Embry-Riddle and it helps you gain access to the vast network of faculty and industry profession um, professionals. And our curriculum is always accessible to our students. So that wraps up the academic section. So let's chat a little bit about the outcomes. So where in Embry-Riddle education can take you? So 93%, and yes, that does say 93%, of our students are employed within one year of graduation or they're continuing on with their education. That is a huge percentage. I believe the national average is about 70%. So as Sarah mentioned earlier, our career services spends a lot of time with our students. We essentially bring everything to the student. They just have to take advantage of it. And there's also a very high demand in the industry. This is just a small list of some of the industries that we absolutely need students in. Um, aeronautics, aviation maintenance. So for instance, if you're wanting to work on airplanes, that is a great major for you. Business, Sarah mentioned earlier about the PBL competition. Engineering, we have a bunch of different engineering majors, not just aerospace, not just mechanical. We have civil, electrical, computer science, software engineering. Human factors, which is super unique. Um, it's essentially studying the body and how you react to different things. It is a psychology major, which most people do not know. And Sarah might wanna talk about the safety and science degree program. Yeah, so one thing I just wanna add um, to what Megan was saying is aviation and aerospace, for those of you that don't know, is a relatively um, older demographic of an industry and it's very, very established. I mean, airplanes have been around for a while. Um, and then we're venturing into a new type of field of space travel becoming a reality. So lots of new opportunities are ari arising and that means lots of job openings, a real high demand for our students. And we provide all the degree programs to kind of support the industry. But as those needs grow, as um, airline travel continues to grow, as space travel becomes a reality, safety and science is always gonna to need to be there. You know, people are always gonna be involved and we have to come up with ways to continue to keep people safe in these types of, of 
exploration. Now we also are finding high demand career opportunities in kind of newer fields and those specifically relate to security and intelligence. So it really wasn't until the early 2000s where we saw security and intel careers really skyrocket. Um, and look at us nowadays, we're very reliant on technology. Um, how many of us go and buy our coffee with our Apple watches or we pay on our phone um, or Venmo or something like that as we just become more reliant on these types of things safety and security measures are gonna to need to be in place for that. Um, pretty much any company outside of aviation and aerospace has a security and intel um, department or chapter because it's really relevant to us now. And these high demand new careers and high demand established careers go back and contribute to that 93% that Megan was talking about. In addition to the hands-on education that we talked about, we're, a variety of stars are aligning per se to help our students at Ember-Riddle be so successful. So that's academics and outcomes. Let's learn a little bit more about our residential and our online campus. So Megan's gonna tell us some more about Daytona Beach. So our Daytona Beach campus has about 6,400 undergrad students. We do have a few grad degrees as well. And like I mentioned, small class sizes. Average class size is about 27. I would say my largest class at Embry-Riddle was about 35, but that was an introduction to management class that a lot of degrees require. So it's really great. My first week of classes, my professor learned my name and you really feel like you're just one person in the class versus being in a lecture hall. There are a ton of ways to get involved on both of our campuses. We have over 200 student clubs and organizations. And our two most unique, I would say, are skydiving club. Yes, our students jump out of perfectly great airplanes, and that happens about 30 minutes from campus at the skydiving capital of the world in Deland. And then we also have an ice hockey team in Florida. Uh, they actually have won competitions as well. Um, it is a club sport, um, and you'll see on here we are Division Two, but for hockey, it is a club sport. We also have active Greek life. And most people think of Greek life and partying, but that is not Embry-Riddle by any means. Um, they actually do a lot of volunteering work and they raise money. Um, so typically in a normal year, they raise about $80,000 a year to local and uh, state organizations. We have 20 intercollegiate sports, um, basically everything but football, as Sarah mentioned earlier. Uh, we have uh, basketball, baseball, softball, lacrosse, golf, don't even know if I said soccer yet, but we have soccer too. Um, and like I said, we're division two. And then we are very close to the beach, about five miles. Uh, it's beautiful, pretty much in any town here in Florida, um, around Daytona Beach, we do have a beach. We have 230 plus days of sunshine. So if you're looking to become a flight student at both our Arizona and Daytona Beach campuses, we have great weather all year round. We are one hour from the Kennedy Space Center, so it's always fun to go visit there. If you've never been to St. Augustine, Florida, it's a beautiful historic district. You can walk around on the cobblestone grounds, go in old little shops. It's right by the beach as well. Um, in our College of Arts and Sciences building, we have the largest university-based research telescope. So if you're wanting to study astronomy and astrophysics, you'll get to use that telescope regularly. And lastly, we're about one hour from the world-class theme park. So there's Universal and we also have Disney. Awesome. So now that we know about Daytona, let's learn a little bit more about our Prescott, Arizona campus. So at the Prescott campus, we're slightly smaller than our friends in Daytona Beach. We've got 3,000 undergraduate students. But just like Megan said, we really try um, to really help supplement that hands-on learning we talked about is to keep those class sizes small. So our average class size in Arizona is about 23 students per class. Clubs and organizations, lots of great opportunities, as Megan mentioned, to get some, um, to have some fun outside of the classroom. Our most popular clubs out here in Arizona, our Hawaii club is pretty popular. We've got a good amount of students from the Hawaiian Islands out here. Um, we also, um, the off-roading club is super popular. We've got beautiful um, rock formations and mountains out here in Arizona. So students like to go off-roading in their trucks throughout that. But there's literally something for everybody. If you were to get to our campus and you didn't find a specific club you wanted, all you would have to do is get five students and a staff or faculty member to be your advisor and you could start your own club. 
Greek life opportunities, just like Megan mentioned, and then intercollegiate athletics. So we compete in the NAIA division, which basically means we compete against other smaller private schools like ourselves outside here on the West Coast. We also have Air Force and Army ROTC detachments. Our detachments have been ranked um, the best in the West and compared to any of the military academies, Embry-Riddle does place the most pilots into the military. So keep that in mind. If you're considering a career path in the military or you wanna be a jet fighter pilot, um, Embry-Riddle is a really great option. And our Daytona Beach campus has not only Army and Air Force, but they also have Marine and Navy ROTC options as well. Now a little bit about the area of Prescott. So lots of people don't really know where Prescott, Arizona is. We are an hour and a half north of Phoenix and an hour and a half south of Flagstaff. So Flagstaff is a city in Arizona that um, is more north, gets a lot of snow. And then Phoenix is where people think, oh, it's so hot, it's 120 degrees there. Um, but because we're right in the middle, our weather is just about perfect. Um, Prescott is also a historical uh, city. We were the territorial capital of Arizona before we became a state. Um, so the downtown area is historic and it's a really fun place for our students to hang out. It is um, a courthouse and it's lined with mom and pop shops and restaurants and museums. It's just a really uh, fun area to hang out and it's got a really good vibe to it as well. As Megan mentioned, when they created Embry-Riddle, they picked Arizona and Florida for a reason because they're both sunny locations, which is fantastic for our flight students. Prescott has been ranked number one by the American Lung Association for actually having the cleanest air in the nation. We were actually in Northern California. Sorry if you're from Northern California. We were there uh, just this past weekend. And when I got off the airplane, I thought, oh, it smells kind of funny out here. I just wish I were back in Prescott with that clean air. Um, National Geographic has ranked us as a top adventure destination town. And then Sunset Magazine has named us as the best value town in the Southwest. So it's a pretty great city out here in Prescott. Um, and then the very last little uh, icon right there, we are actually home to the world's oldest rodeo. So if you do happen to come visit us, I highly recommend visiting over the summer because the 4th of July is when the rodeo happens out here and you don't want to miss it. So now that we know about our two residential campuses, Megan's going to tell us a little bit more about our online World Dive campus. So as I mentioned earlier, we do have our online campus that originally was started for active duty military, um, but now we've definitely grown to over 17,000 undergraduate students. Um, you can do your uh, bachelor's, you can do your master's. And what's really unique is you can take classes anywhere. You just need your computer, you sign in, you have about a week to do your work. Um, and it's very structured. Your average class size is about 19. So it's never um, a ton of people in one class. It does typically involve group work. So you get to uh, meet with different people pretty much all across the world. Um, our worldwide ca campus was a top five ranked online educator for the past five years flexible and affordable. Like I said, you can take classes anywhere and their number one online bachelor's degrees for veterans. So now that you know about our campuses, you're probably wondering, oh, sign me up. How do I come to Embry-Riddle? So let's learn a little bit more about the next steps. And we'll start with the admissions process. So with the admissions process, this is what you need to apply. You need to complete the application and do know that we have our own university specific application. We're not on the Common App. Um, we are rocking our own Embry-Riddle application, which you can find directly from our website. Now, when you do apply, there's normally a $50 application fee, but for listening to our presentation today, there's a four letter application fee waiver code right there on the slide, DBPC. Feel free to enter that in um, and it will waive the $50 application fee for you. We will also need a copy of your transcripts. So high school transcripts, if you're a current high school student, or if you happen to be a transfer student, send us those college transcripts. Um, but we just need to be able to assess your academic background. And for the review of the application, we can use your unofficial copies. We'll just need your official copies before you start classes with us. We ask that you send us two letters of recommendation. Some great people to write those letters would be your math or science teacher, the guidance counselor at school, if you've already started flying, maybe your flight instructor, anybody who's gonna help us get to know you and who's gonna say something good about you. Then we've got some optional items. So we are a test optional institution. We have been for the past four or five years, which means it, you do not have to send us your ACT or SAT. 
However, if you want to, a good kind of point of reference would be if you took the ACT or SAT and you feel good about your score, you feel that they accurately represent your educational background, go ahead and send those in to us and we'll take those into consideration. If you on the opposite side of things, um, don't feel like your score turned out what you thought it would be, that's okay. Just don't send us your test scores. Uh, they are completely optional in the process. Last optional item is an essay or a resume. Now, a frequent question that we get is um, lots of students wonder, we've got two residential campuses, so people think that they need to apply to both campuses and see which one they get into. Don't do that. So we actually share the same application, the same database system, we have the same admissions requirements as well. So if you're accepted to one campus, your acceptance is going to be good at the other campus as long as there's space available in the program. So at the point of application, please just select what campus you're most interested in um, and move forward and you know, know that we can change your application at any time. I also want to mention what we're going to look at. So of course, we want to see your grades. We want to see your test scores if you send those to us. Um, but we also want to get to know you. We want to see the whole student in our process. So we want to read what those letters of recommendation have to say. We want to see what you're involved in outside of the classroom. Um, maybe you're on volleyball team or you uh, got your Eagle Scout award. Those are all fantastic things to share with us. And we take those all into consideration when we review files for admission. Now, after students are admitted, we automatically review them for academic scholarships. So Megan's going to tell us a little bit more about our financial aid process. What's really great about Embry-Riddle too, although we have a higher sticker price, we do like to give out financial aid. So 94% of Embry-Riddle freshman students receive some sort of financial aid. So that could be in the form of merit-based aid. So once a student is accepted, we automatically review them for our merit-based aid. And that typically happens around November. Um, the next step is the FAFSA for need-based aid, and that opens October 1st um, for seniors. We also accept any external scholarships as well, so feel free to look on our website. Um, we have some listed there by topics, and there's some other great websites, um, myscholly.com, and if our associate director, Ken Perry, was here, he would tell you about the ultimate scholarship book guide that's available for about $22 at pretty much any bookstore. And lastly, a great way to get financial aid is your involvement on campus. Um, so typically your first year, they will not let you be a resident advisor on campus, um, but come your sophomore year, or maybe even the second half of your freshman year, you can apply for that position and it is a paid position. Um, through our Student Government Association, there's some paid positions there. And then of course, of course, athletics, there are a few opportunities there as well. One other opportunity for scholarships um, would be that ROTC that I also mentioned. They have fantastic opportunities, but just keep in mind, if you're interested in that type of um, program and then career path, you do have to apply for those scholarships directly through those branches of the military. Last couple of slides here. We would highly encourage you to come visit our campus. So both of our campuses are open and we are offering tours throughout the year. Um, we really only shut down for a couple of weeks around the, the New Year, Christmas, holiday type season. Uh, but spring break, summer times, I highly recommend this to all prospective college students, whether you're looking at Embry-Riddle or not. So many students tell us that once they stepped foot on campus, once they saw the facilities, they talked to a faculty member, they just kind of felt the vibe they knew that Embry-Riddle was where they wanted to be. So you can schedule a tour directly from our website or you can give us a call. Um, it's a really great way to kind of get a sneak peek of what it's like to be an Embry-Riddle student. We also offer open houses on both of our campuses and in the springtime preview day for admitted students. Speaking of open house, we do have our open house coming up next month, so it's a great day to visit one of our campuses. We will have not only tours, but the opportunity to talk to current students, to talk to faculty members, to maybe meet your future best friend, to see the labs that we've talked about, and again, to just really get a good sense of what it would be like to be an Embry-Riddle student. So open house on both of our campuses in Daytona Beach and Prescott is Saturday, October 30th. 
And the last thing we want to encourage you is just to stay in contact with us. We are readily available in the admissions office, but we're also available on the Zimi app. So this is an app you can download directly to your phone and you can join the Embry-Riddle community. And this will basically connect you with other interested Embry-Riddle students. It'll connect you to all of us in both of our admissions offices. Um, so all the admissions counselors are on it. It's just a great way to stay up to date on all things happening um, Embry Riddle and potentially make some connections for the future. As I mentioned, please reach out to us. We are in the office Monday through Friday, eight to five in our time zones. Um, and you can always email us as well, but we are here to help you along the way and to really um, just make Ember, help you make Embry Riddle a reality if this is where you want to attend. So that concludes our formal presentation for the evening. Uh, we hope that you have learned something more about Ember Riddle, and please reach out to us if you do have any questions. Well, perfect. Thanks so much, y'all. Just a couple things as we wrap up. When you close this window, you will see a quick five-minute survey. And so we would appreciate any feedback that you could provide us, not only about this session, but any other sessions you attended tonight. Um, I encourage you all to go online to strivescan.com slash cache, and that's where you can find not only this recording, but also recordings of all of the other sessions that happened tonight. So with that, we are wrapped up. Thank you all so much for attending, and have a good night.